the inferior alveolar and lingual injections. The inferior alveolar injection anesthetizes the periodontal ligaments, pulpal and osseous tissues in the mandibular quadrant, buccal gingival tissues from the premolars through the midline in the quadrant, and the skin and mucous membrane of the lower lip. Because the lingual nerve runs just medial and anterior to the inferior alveolar nerve, this nerve is normally anesthetized during the same needle insertion as the inferior alveolar injection. The lingual nerve innervates the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, the floor of the mouth, and the lingual gingiva of all the mandibular teeth in the quadrant. This nerve does not innervate any pulpal tissue. Some clinicians give this as a separate injection, which is also acceptable. It may be given on the way in, or it may be given on the way out of the tissue, after the inferior alveolar injection has been administered. For this demonstration, the lingual nerve will not be given as a separate injection, but rather anesthetized along the pathway to the inferior alveolar nerve. Gently retract the cheek laterally. Palpate landmarks. Locate and palpate the internal and external oblique ridges, coronoid notch, and pterygomandibular raffae. Dry the tissue with a 2 by 2 prior to placing the topical. Place topical in the pterygomandibular triangle, which is the depression created by these landmarks. Use a 25 or 27 gauge long needle. The penetration site for this injection is medial to the internal oblique ridge, lateral to the pterygomandibular raffae, at the height of the coronoid notch, approximately 2 to 3 millimeters superior to the greatest concavity of the coronoid notch, or approximately 10 millimeters above the occlusal plane. Another good landmark, if you have your finger in the depth of the coronoid notch, is to look at the top of your finger, and usually the insertion site is approximately adjacent to the top of that finger. For this injection, the barrel of the syringe should be over the opposite premolars and is parallel to and above the mandibular occlusal plane. As you start inserting, you may notice more resistance with this injection than you have in previous injections. Continue to advance the needle from this angle of the corner of the mouth until bone is gently contacted. The needle should be slightly above the mandibular foramen at this point. The depth of insertion is approximately 20 to 25 millimeters or about two-thirds the length of the long needle. Do not deposit unless bone has been gently contacted. Withdraw one millimeter and aspirate at this deposition site. Aspiration may occur more than once. After injecting a half a carpule, it is prudent to aspirate at least one more time. Deposit a minimum of 1.5 milliliters or about three-fourths of the cartridge. If doing a buccal injection, you will be able to use the remaining fourth of the carpial for that subsequent injection. After depositing, gently remove the needle and make the needle safe. Comments about the inferior alveolar injection. Clinicians new to local anesthesia frequently confuse the insertion site for this injection. They often neglect to palpate the internal oblique ridge and believe that they are depositing between the internal and external oblique ridges. That is not the case. Be sure to palpate the internal oblique ridge and deposit medial to it. For patients with class 3 occlusion or those with a prognathic mandible, insert approximately 1 centimeter higher. For children, insert at the level of the occlusal plane. If the needle is too low, too anterior or too posterior in relation to the foramen, anesthetic will not be profound with this injection. If the needle does not penetrate the sphenomandibular ligament, it cannot reach the foramen and anesthetic will not be profound. This ligament can be rather rigid and provide extra resistance when met by the needle. An experienced clinician becomes adept at determining the difference between hard resistance or periosteum, and soft resistance, which might be muscle or ligament, 
and thus recognizing the final deposition site of the anesthetic solution of this injection. In some cases, bone may be contacted prematurely, that is, when half the length or less of the long needle is inserted. When this situation occurs, the needle has likely been inserted too far laterally and or too low. To correct that occurrence, withdraw the needle half the length from the tissue, do not completely remove it, and redirect the barrel of the syringe more anteriorly toward the lateral or central incisors. Once again, slowly advance the needle until it is beyond the original depth and thus beyond the obstacle. Then, redirect the needle so that the barrel of the syringe is once again over the contralateral premolars. Advance the needle until it gently touches periosteum. Then aspirate and slowly deposit the anesthetic solution as described previously. In the opposite case, that is the needle does not contact periosteum at the anticipated depth, the clinician should withdraw the needle slightly from the tissue and redirect the barrel of the syringe more posteriorly toward the molars, then readvance the needle until periosteum is gently contacted. A patient may experience a momentary shocking sensation frequently felt when the needle nears the lingual nerve if it is touched by the needle. Should that sensation occur, the operator should explain to the patient exactly what has occurred and tell them that they are right on target, it is only a temporary sensation, and they will begin getting numb immediately. Inform the patient that this is a normal occurrence so that he doesn't or she doesn't think that the clinician has poor technique. Complications Trismus is not an uncommon complication with this injection. Other possible complications include hematoma or facial nerve paralysis if the needle is directed too far posteriorly and bone has not been contacted.